So here we have it, this 5-4 victory, which we knew they had to do, because otherwise Blue Lock would have to end, because it just didn't feel like one of those shows where they quote-unquote kill the main character off, and then we see who the real main character is. While it wouldn't be impossible to write Blue Lock like that, I think after 10 episodes prior to this of building Asagi and this team up, to eliminate them in this way, I just don't see it working. So we knew it ultimately had to come to a W, and we most likely all assumed Isagi would be the one to get the final goal. But I probably am not the only one who, while watching this episode and the numerous plays that happened from passing to they're about to take the shot, that didn't work out, then they have to pass here. By the end, I was like, oh, maybe Asagi won't get the goal. Maybe it will be Chigri. I mean, he's a fast boy. Maybe he'll come up and he'll end up having to pass. And the fact that the pieces click in such a way that we finally see what type of a striker he is, and that direct shot was just so pure monster energy, you couldn't help but just feel like a proud dad or a proud parent, right? That's just how into the show I am at this point. Now, I do have a full live reaction available on my Patreon if you're interested in seeing that, so consider if you so wish. But let's talk about those seven-ish minutes that this episode just went completely in. I mean, this was some of the craziest animation, some of the craziest intensity, the just the sheer vibe of this episode. When you look at the team they're facing, should they lose here, they're not getting eliminated. This would be their first loss. So to see them that determined, refusing to give up help, even after it becomes 5-4, we have our boys saying, we just need two more goals. Let's do it. We can do it. They're not even paying attention to how much time's left. They literally had two seconds or so left as he's saying just two more goals. They were so into it, and characters who had no desire to really play outside of a, you know, I'm doing it because my friend told me to sort of a thing. I love the fact that this match meant everything to both sides, and while well, yes, Asagi's team, they needed to win in order to survive, there was something so raw and visceral about that, that rage, that passion, that determination to do whatever it took, and the fact that we started this show with Asagi not taking the goal, not taking the shot to get a goal, I should say, and instead passed, and because of that, ended up losing. That guilt ate away at him, and over the course of this show, we've been seeing him get more and more mature. He's not perfect, and Hell, he's probably one of the weakest in terms of stamina and all these other different things. But we've very quickly into the show realized that his main skill set to make up these calculations, these plans, he can predict where people are going to go. And as we saw in this episode, most of it went exactly according to plan. The issue, which the biggest one was, he couldn't do it on the fly half the time. But now seemingly he's getting a lot better. But then the other issue pops up. Well, here's the thing. If someone counters something he predicts, he starts to fumble, and then things start to break down. So what's the missing piece, that missing element? And to see him do something no one saw come. I didn't see it coming. The character's dead-ass expression of what the hell just happened said it. But the fact that he took that shot, and I literally said this in the reaction, I swear to God, if that goalie blocked that shot, I was going to be done watching Blue Lock. Not seriously, but I mean, after all that build-up, imagining had like it hit the tip of his finger and then Chiguri had to get the goal or something, it just would have been disrespectful to Asagi. So I'm glad that he was able to get a goal, and already by episode 11, going back to the very first episode, which these types of moments typically don't happen until the end of a lot of shows, or at the very least, the end of a first season. And maybe you can make the argument if this was a one-core season, it basically falls into shonen trope where things start to reverse. But the fact that for a 24-episode anime, by episode 11, he already feels like he redeemed himself from that first episode failure, you just can't help but just want to cheer like these are real athletes. And to already get a taste of where the next round's going to go, the fact that there's actually going to be real professional athletes that will be training alongside with them, the fact that... Our ego bastard just, he comes in and just is basically like, yeah, I've been lying to you this whole time. I basically made you think there's all these different buildings and then here's the results because here's the thing. Look at all these professional athletes. They started in the slums. They started at the bottom and that drive, that desire to get goals to take them from nothing into something. It's no wonder he's going about it in a similar way. A majority of the room there is absolutely pissed off, though I had to say that was actually kind of brilliant in order to make them all feel like they were failures and were just holding on by the skin of their teeth or something like that. It was a really good play in my opinion. And then to see the casual guy who's the first one to go into the room, he shoots first, which was this elegant shot, nice angle everything, then he does it a second time and the two shots collide together. Warm-up's done, I'm gonna go hit the training now. 
I mean, I was not surprised that they cut off before seeing what was beyond the door. I mean, they've been spoiling us week after week. I did see a lot of people say last week they shouldn't have ended the episode there, but I was perfectly good with that because I knew we would have at least five minutes of an episode. Turned out we had about seven left to basically see the resolve. And while you can make an argument that it would be a great ending point with them winning and cheering and being excited, there's something about seeing the aftermath of all that, seeing the crushing defeat of someone who hadn't lost that entire game so far, to then seeing so many characters leave out the exit and knowing how close their team came at so many different points. But I think a lot of people are going to pinpoint one specific moment as their favorite moment. And it would be hard not to say it, you, you can make a good argument. And that's Quan getting punched in the face. That was not a simple slap. That wasn't a simple just little, hey, you know what? You screwed us around, buddy. No, that was a knockout blow that teeth would usually pop out from your mouth. And I think that's kind of what he deserved. It's a mixed bag, right? I think on one hand, half the team should give him a, you know, high five. Thanks for letting us have that second chance. The other half should punch him in the face and I think that punch probably represented the entire team's anger and I like the fact that rather than him just kind of coming around and saying I wanted to help my friends it was more so he realized he messed up and he was basically acting like the same type of athlete that made him mad back in the day and he wanted to make his old self proud in a lot of ways. I think they did a great job with Quan. I still think he's going to be one of the first to get eliminated. I just don't see him surviving. But I do like the fact that there was more than just him stabbing them in the back and getting to carry on as an egotistical evil bastard. Instead, they did something interesting with his character, but I won't lie, that punch was very satisfying and you could put that into a gif and uh, I'd be looping that nonstop, not gonna lie. This is an absolutely flawless production. I love how they're blending 3D. I love the, the grid effect when you see like the play start to be made. Like it honestly feels like you're inside a computer and the fact that in seconds this is the type of shit Asagi's thinking of as you see all these different elements and I know damn well I couldn't keep up with all that shit and just to see how they're detailing it like in my humble opinion this is the most stylistically impressive sports series that has sucked me in. Not saying there aren't amazing animated sports series out there. There are from the whole different points in time. You can look at Megalobox as a more modern example. You can look at Epo as a more classical example because holy shit considering Epo classical material but it kind of does fit that at this point anymore it's wild to think how far we are into the 2020s now but I digress there is amazing production but there's something about blue lock with the eyes the glowing effects the way they blend the 3d meets hand-drawn and everything it's hard not to be sucked into this world and this is exactly what a manga adaptation should look like if you're trying to bring something to life and that's why i haven't really seen any blue lock manga readers be like damn i wish it was more like the manga all i'm seeing is damn this is the shit i read in the manga but 10 times more hype and that's what i love to see but either way i'll leave another episode just hyped up excited and uh interested to see where this next rounds are gonna go a lot of great character moments incoming and new faces alike so excited to see where they take it but thoughts and feelings yourself down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here like i mentioned full live reaction available on the patreon and while you're there why don't you get yourself a video shout out like brayway way and stefan dobrescu getting it today so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one